These are a set of stereo speakers. And when you hook them up to your amplifier, of course you pay attention to which is the right and which is the left. And also the positive and negative leads that go to the speakers. Now these speakers are connected correctly and when you're playing music the speakers are now working together and producing a nice stereo effect. However, if you should make an error and hook one of these speakers up incorrectly like the right one is in this drawing. Now the speakers are not working together and what you'll hear is the stereo effect will be greatly diminished and depending on the frequencies might disappear altogether. The way the right speaker is hooked up in this drawing it is working 180 degrees out of phase with the left speaker. So obviously you would want to correct that so both speakers are working together. This is a common emitter single transistor amplifier. It's a very popular type amplifier. And I wanted to take a look at the phasing of the signal coming in to the signal going out in two places, at the collector and also at the emitter. Okay, now I'm going to hook up channel 2, which is the bottom trace, to our input signal. Now for channel 1, I'm going to hook that up to the collector and I'm going to move the channel 1 trace down and you can clearly see that it is a hundred and eighty degrees out of phase with the base which is the input. Now I'm going to put channel 1 on the emitter. I'm going to turn up the scope also move the trace down and you can now clearly see that the signal at the emitter is in phase with the signal on the base. Looking at the diagram what we saw at the collector was this. The signal coming out of the collector is 180 degrees out of phase with the base. And when we took a look at the emitter, we found out that that signal coming out of the emitter is in phase with the base. So depending on the purpose of the amplifier, knowing the phasing can be important. This is a nice studio microphone and let's say that you're given the job to set up a remote at let's say oh some place like oh a high school basketball game in in the gym of course and 
you're going to have this nice announcer's mic and it's going to go to an amplifier and then back to the station. Well, as we know, the ambient noise and the crowd noise in a gymnasium can be very high and thus the announcer's voice can get lost. Well, if we had a, another microphone of the exact same type and we had it pointed toward the crowd but fairly close to the announcer but uh, it's not picking up the announcer at all and we're going to call this one the stadium microphone we can use two microphones to help cancel out that background stadium noise and control it. Let's take a closer look at that stadium microphone. Now remember these are the same mics and what you do is on the one that you're going to use for the background for the stadium to control it you reverse the leads on the inside and of course now that microphone is dedicated for this purpose so now that ambient noise from the stadium is now going to be 180 degrees out of phase with the noise that is entering the announcer's mic. So now if you hook both of those up to a menorah amplifier that has a gain control for both, you can set the level for the announcer, but since the signal coming in from your stadium microphone is 180 degrees out of phase, you can control the amount of stadium background noise that gets fed back to the station. And one of the neat things about this is once you have your level set up properly, of course, when the crowd gets very noisy, well, that sound hits both microphones cancels each other out the way that you have it set up so the level remains the same pretty much the same of course it does very little bit but the announcer is always heard nice and clear thanks for watching